You know, with the Federal Reserve Bank telling us that they're going to keep interest rates higher for longer, it's pretty shocking how bullish everyone seems to be in the stock market. The S&P only pulled back a fraction this week. And as I said before, as a long-term investor, I don't short the markets or short my positions. But what I do is to take profits in my positions if I feel like we're going to have a downturn. Every week, I provide updates on my investments in play and speculation in play portfolios totally for free on my website, getert.com. But I wanted to incorporate some of that into the YouTube channel too. So each week I rank all of my positions based on how they performed that week as well as how they've performed year to date. And then we get winners and losers each week. This week in the speculation in play portfolio it was actually my crappiest position, Danimer Scientific, that won the week with a 3.26% gain. And this is just because this stock is so oversold from where it used to be. This week's loser was Grow Generation, down 7.97%. And that's simply because the cannabis sector has come under hard times again, since Congress was unable to pass the Safe Banking Act back in December. I kind of went hog wild when it came to speculation in play. I closed a number of old positions, as well as reduced profits and position sizes pretty much across the board. First up was Chevron, which I sold on Tuesday the 17th at $180.45. This closed out my position in Chevron, which I had since March of 2020, and gave me a lifetime gain of 281.50. Annualized, that's 99.23% year over year. And this was all thanks to the unbelievable buying opportunity that the pandemic gave us when it came to the energy stocks. Next up, I closed General Electric, also on Tuesday, this time at $79.96. This gave me a lifetime profit of 79.93%. I've held this position since December of 2018. So annualized, that's a 15.99% gain year over year. The reason General Electric was even in the speculation in play portfolio was that before it had its reverse split, it traded around $5 a share. However, after it had the 10 for 1 reverse split, which means you actually lose 10 shares for every one share you held, this stock simply didn't fit the thesis for the speculation in play portfolio. It became too large to be able to manipulate the way I do. Next up was Trade Web Markets, which I closed on Tuesday at $72.71, locking in a lifetime gain of 164.61%. I've held this position since April of 2019, so annualized, that's 43.89% per year. TradeWeb has actually performed really well over the years. However, it's become a more stable company kind of fell out of the sort of speculative nature that I wanted to keep for this portfolio, which is why I closed it. I opened a speculative position in the airlines ETF with the ticker symbol JETS back when it was crashing in March of 2020, and it's been a very interesting play since then. Since I was so profitable in this position, I decided to take profits and remove capital out this week. So I had a sale on Tuesday at $20.11, and then a second sale on Thursday at $19.80, giving me an average selling price of $19.96. This lowered the per share cost from $8.54 to negative $2.68. What that means is I've pulled all the original investment capital out of this position in addition to $2.68 per share of the shares that I still hold in this portfolio. From here, my next buy target is $16.04, slightly above a key level of past support. And my next sell target is $24.06, slightly below a key level of resistance. In Carnival Cruise Line's case, it has rallied so much off its lows that I decided it was time to take profits. It's up 71.36% from its 2022 lows. So this week I made two sales, my first on the 18th at $10.63 and my second on the 19th at $10.08 which gave me an average selling price of $10.26. The combination of these two sales lowered my per share cost 34.86%, from $7 down to $4.56. And from here, my next sell target is at $23.61, below a past level of resistance. And my next buy target is down here at $6.19, above CCL's lows from 2022. I took profits in DraftKings on the 17th at $13.94, and even though this is below my cost basis, the reason I did this was I was up 
percent in gains on the shares that I bought for ten dollars and forty cents back on May eleventh of twenty two. Naturally, this sale actually raised my per share cost up seven point one six eight percent from twenty seven dollars and ninety cents to twenty nine dollars and ninety cents. From here, my next sell target is at twenty one dollars and sixteen cents below DraftKings is high from twenty twenty two, and my next buy target is down here at ten dollars and seventy four cents. The next level of support that it's set back in December. And following that would be 2022's lows at $9.77. Next up is Las Vegas Sands, and I made a sale on the 17th at $54.14. Even though I believe LVS has a lot more upside left in it, this locked in 50.89% gains on shares that I bought at $35.88 on November 30th. This also served to remove all of the original capital out of this position, lowering my per share cost from $21.85 to negative $10.44. From here, my next sell target is $66.56, a little bit below Las Vegas's high from 2021. And my next buy target isn't LVS's low from 2022. In fact, it's here at $34.04. And the reason for this is it's found a lot of support here in the past, and I have a feeling it will do so again if it pulls back back that far. Next up is Pinterest, one of my long-running successful investments, and I took profits on the 19th at $25.60. Even though I'd already taken all my capital out of my pins position, I decided to take more profits because I am that bearish, and this sale lowered my per share cost from negative $13.50 to negative $29.14. From here, I'm going to be a little bit more conservative about how I take profits, so I'm going to wait until $65.70 before I even and consider doing anything like that. This was below a past point of resistance. And from here, my next buy target is $17. It's above Pinterest's low from 2022 and around a key level of support from the past. Next up is Zillow. And just like DraftKings, I actually took profits below my cost basis. And the reason for this was on the 17th at $42.45, I was able to lock in 45.88% in gains on shares that I bought for $29.10 back in September. This only raised my my per share cost 3.76% from $47.85 to $49.65. But since I feel like it might be rolling over, it also meant that I freed up that capital buy again if Zillow starts selling off. My next buy target for Zillow is $28.65, and this is quite a bit above past levels of support, even though the low was actually down here in October at $26.14, I still would like to replace the shares I sold if it does see this key level of support again. Because I believe when the home builders turn around, Zillow will also do better, I'm going to hold off taking more profits until we get up to $88.95, just under a key level of resistance from Zillow's past. From here, let's take a look at the investments in Play Portfolio. Now, not a whole lot happened there this week, but we can look at the winners and the losers. And oddly enough, the biggest winner this week was Coinbase with a 10.36% gain. You can also see that Coin is currently the year-to-date leader as it's already gained 55.86% off of its lows. Now, this is partially because Coinbase was so dramatically oversold down there, but it's also partially because Bitcoin has seen a huge rally over the course of the week. This week's loser was Schwab with a negative 7.17% loss. And this was because they had a bad earnings report and missed on the earnings they thought they were going to have and gave bad forward guidance. So that's just what happens when you do that. The market will always punish a bad earnings report. I did make a move in this portfolio this week in Rivian, where I made a buy on the 19th at $15.62. This buy lowered my per share cost 24.08% from $39.25 a share to to $29.80 a share. And I do believe Rivian could continue selling off. So my next buy target is $10.20, which is calculated both using the Fibonacci method, but also because it's above that key psychological $10 even mark. And from here, my next sell target is $35.10, just below a key level of resistance that Rivian saw when it hit that point last year. You can follow along in all of my moves in all of my portfolios 100% for free at my website, geturk.com. Thank you for watching. Please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.